Hi, everybody. How's it going? Good. Good, great. It's nice to hear. So I'm, I'm going to talk about React with gRPC today. So first, hi, I'm Disha, and I'm from India. That's a map of India. I'm from the Maharashtra region. So I came to Boston about three years ago to pursue my master's at Northeastern University. And I was done December last year. And then I started working at Optimus Ride. So anybody heard of Optimus Ride before? Oh, oh, that's great. I'm here to tell you about that. So we are a self-driving technology company. So that's actually one of our cute vehicles there. And we are working towards autonomous services to provide the first mile and last mile solutions. And we deploy really low speed electrical vehicles. So they are safe, they are efficient, and they are pretty cool. And with Optimus Ride, we have a lot of tools that are some are for our operations team, some are for our customers, and they are built in React. So that's what I do. I do some front end, I do some back end, I do primarily bits and pieces of a lot of things. So yeah, again, I'm here to talk about React and gRPC. It's what is React? How do you use it with, uh, sorry, what is gRPC? How do you use it with React? And why you might want to use it? So a backstory for this is when I joined Optimus about seven months ago, my manager came up to me and he said that we, have, we are in the frameworks of building a gRPC backend and we need to integrate it with React. So I was like, cool, okay. So I did what good software engineers do. I Googled it. I Googled React and gRPC. And this is what I got, that commonly used frameworks like React and Angular do not offer official support for gRPC. And I was like this. <laughs> but I wanted to keep my job, so I <laughs> looked deeper into other links, and I realized it's not that difficult to integrate both of them. And yeah, I get to keep my job then. So what is gRPC? So we'll start with what it stands for. So it stands for gRPC Remote Procedure Calls. It's a recursive acronym, but it gives us some valuable information. It tells us that it's a remote procedure call. So it's a modern uh, open source high performance RPC framework, and it was initially developed by Google, and then they open sourced it, so yay. And just to refresh on RPC, so as RPC stands for remote procedure call, it extends our local procedure call concept. So in local procedure call, when the calling function and like the caller and the callee are on the same system, we call it as a local procedure call. In remote, when they are sent over a network, we call it as a remote procedure call. So here's a small diagram that shows the caller procedure that it makes a request. It has some parameters that are passed through to the callee procedure, and it suspends. It waits for the reply. Then the callee procedure, it receives these requests, it executes the program, and it sends back the reply. So for the caller procedure, it doesn't really know that it went somewhere else. For it, it is as good as a local procedure call. So RPC is actually here to kind of replace REST, so to see them side by side. And REST, we consider a resource, and we perform operations to the resource, we do a get, we do a post, a put, or a delete. In RPC, we do the same things, but in the form of functions. That we have a get write, we have an add write, an update, and a delete. So they're actually doing the same thing, but they could even do more. Like we could have a start write, we have a finish write, which again, we could do by rest, but it's like mixing the both of these things together. So gRPC. So the main idea that gRPC has is to build a contract, to build a service, which the front end and the back end agree on. So everybody is on the same page. They know what parameters are being passed, what return types are being passed, and it's a contract between those two parties. Protocol buffers. So next I'm going to dive into protocol buffers. It is because gRPC and protocol buffers, they go hand in hand. So you can actually do one without doing the other, but together they make a very good team. So protocol buffers is just a way of serializing data. So I would say think XML, but something small, something faster, and very simple. So in protocol buffers, we have a structure known as a message. So a message, you might envision it something like a class, that it is small, and it has fields. So you specify what data you want to pass, and that makes up a message simply. 
And next we have a service. So a service is like a set of all the methods which have different parameters and return type. But the smart thing is that the parameters and return types can be in form of messages that we just defined. So the contract between the two parties is such that we know what data is being passed and everybody agrees on the parameters and also on the return types. So this is one of the most starting thing that I did was a hello world proto. So as we see, there is a message that's a hello request that just sends a string that is a name. And there's a response that says a hello reply, which is again a just a simple string. And below there is a service that is the greeter service that just says hello. It takes a hello request and it sends a hello reply. This is something is the most simple structure of a proto file and it has an extension that is dot proto. The product compiler. So these, this proto file is passed through a product compiler and once we pass it through the compiler, we actually get generated code, which is classes, and that can be used at the client and the server code. So this is exactly how we maintain the contract, that everybody embeds this code into their own code, and everybody is on the same page. Everybody knows what's being passed, what's being returned. So this is a diagram that I got of the official gRPC site. So the gRPC server, the gRPC stubs, that are the dark part, that is the generated code, which we just embed in our own service and build a layer around it. And the great thing about gRPC is that you can have, it has support for many languages, and you are basically language independent, that the service can be in C++, it can be in Python, you have your client that can be in Ruby, that can be in TypeScript, and they communicate through these proto request and proto response. So the role of the generated code is mainly to unpack these proto request and proto response. So when they come up, they are unpacked and they are transported back to our code. So gRPC web. So the strange thing is that when gRPC was out, there was no real way to use it with browsers. And gRPC web lets us access these with browsers. And gRPC web implements a different protocol than the native gRPC. So to be honest, we are going to use gRPC web with React. And you might ask, why? Why are they different? Because of HTTP2. So gRPC uses HTTP2. And I know that browsers now, they support HTTP2. But when they say that they support, they mean that they just Run, like they just do it under the hood and they just convert an HTTP 1.1 request into two. But for us to have to work with gRPC, we need a lot of underlying structure to be exposed to us, some APIs to be exposed to us, which we can work with and kind of have control over our request and responses, which is currently not available. So now what is so different with gRPC web? So proxies, that is what proxies to the rescue. So the protocol is designed such to make so that it individual, it has like proxies in it and it's very easy. It, sorry, it doesn't have proxies in it, but it is easy to translate between proxies and it's very easy to have a proxy layer in between. So we have the client, we have the server, and we have a proxy layer in between. So Envoy. So there are many ways you can use. You can use gateways, you can use other proxies, but currently we are using Envoy back and that is because Envoy is like the default proxy. It has gRPC web right out of the box, and that's what we are planning to use. So gRPC web language support, like I said, gRPC itself supports multiple of languages, and a gRPC web language support, you can have common JS, you can have TypeScript files for that, and you can have only a TypeScript, pure TypeScript stub, and that is what we are doing. We are having a pure TypeScript stub, that really helps us to enforce typings, and so everybody is happy with each other, basically. So we revisit our Hello Proto, and this is something that looks for the proto command for the protoc compiler that we would be running. So this is a gRPC web plugin. So you need a protoc executable, you need a protoc gen gRPC web plugin, and you run a command similar to this where you so specify the import style. So the import style is TypeScript and a common JS style. So for that, you get all those generated files. I'll talk shortly that. So these are the generated files that you get. You get one file that has the hello request and the hello reply classes. You have another typings file for that. And then you have a service client, 
um, that actually has the greeter client that we had in our proto. So these are the three files that will be generated. If you just give a common JS, you will not get the TypeScript file, but a JS file instead. So yeah, so now we are going to talk about how to integrate it with React. So if you have like a backend service, you run the same proto for say Python and you get Python generated files that go to the backend and you run the proto for TypeScript and you have the files that come to the front end. And we use this to, so first we implement the required things. We do a gRPC web import. We get the hello world and hello world service client that we currently had. So this is some snippets from very elementary code that I did. So yeah, so we have this class that is a hello app. So we notice that we first create a greeter client and that uh, listens to this Envoy listener host. So how Envoy works is that we have a set of listeners that are listening to certain ports and hosts and they pass it down to the cluster and the cluster is our backend. So it stands in between, it listens to a particular requirement and it passes it forward to the clusters. And here we implement our say hello. So all it does is it sends back the name in the form of request. So these set name is something that you get out of the box. These are something that come with our generated classes. So it's really easy. You create a request object that is a hello request. You set a name and you just send it. Like you use the client stub to say hello. It's a request that is sent. And you know what the response you're expecting here. You can hard code it like response is hello reply and it will resolve and reject based on the uh, backend. And this is something that you can use your hello app wherever you want to use it. You just fetch the greeting and you do a greeting dot get message. Again, this get message is something which is right off the generated classes. And assuming our server side code something just adds an aloha to whatever name we send. So we get the output is like aloha human because we send a human string, that is. So why gRPC? So I'm going to spend some time talking about why should we use gRPC? So the first benefit is that the strict type checking, and it has, because we can actually have the errors detected right at the compile time rather than having at the run time. And we always know what contract is between the two com, uh, parties, and it's always binding. And that's a good, that's a great thing to have a formal API. The second is a service-oriented architecture. I think this is where REST misses out, that REST does not have a proper service-oriented architecture. Here we have the service laid out and the front end is pretty much knows what it's going to get and what all it can look for, what all functions it can have. So that is a service-oriented architecture, language agonistic. So gRPC is in multiple languages. You have C, C++, you have Python. There are uh, various things that you can have your backend in and the front end doesn't even have to care. And even for building a backend, it's, it's a great language. And for it's mature, it's robust, it's widely used. So I think Netflix is currently using it. And there are a lot of things that like everything, everyone is trying to use it because it's so in currently. And the last thing is that it has, you have a lot of tricks to like build your backend in gRPC have your gateways configured such that you actually get the rest for free. So you see what I did there, the rest for free. But okay, <laughs> in the puns thing, okay. Oh, yeah, I think we had enough puns yesterday, so okay. So, yeah. so you can have some gateway configuration and you, you're great to go. You just build your backend in gRPC, you decide if the front end wants to use gRPC, they use gRPC, you want to use rest, they use rest. The good thing about that is when you have two teams, like the backend and the front end, once you agree on the proto, once you have your strict contract set up, they can just do work independently of each other. They don't need to be in constant contact. If in, just if one of them is changing something, they need to talk to each other. Or you can just have two parallel things and you're definitely sure that you're going to meet in the end, that it's all going to work out and be good. So that is something that is great about gRPC and I, I just started like with gRPC about six months back, so not a good, great expert on gRPC, I would say, but yeah, I just wanted to share everything that I learned about gRPC, why it's so great, and why anybody would might want to use it in their own this. So thank you, and you can reach me at dshasule, and see ya.